Thank you so much for joining us. And sorry to keep you waiting because I took those questions. <laughs> and uh, because, you know, we got constant uh, requests from the audience yesterday when we had the first day that uh, we really want to ask questions and interact with the panelists. So we'll do the same today uh, at the end of the session. Uh, but uh, uh, right now, the topic of, uh, you know, discussion today is wealth preservation and growth post-retirement. Post so, uh, while planning for retirement is a challenge in itself, like we all know, uh, a bigger one presents itself often after retirement because you have to balance your cash flow as well as, uh, you know, kind of growth of your corpus to uh, kind of fund you in the later years of retirement. Because 60 is one, but then there'll be 70, 75, and all of those years for which you might need growth. So uh, inflation, of course, we know is the biggest enemy. And uh, we often talk about the power of compounding uh, when it comes to investments, but that often also applies to the expenses because, you know, the expenses are compounding equally uh, because of inflation. So this becomes a primary concern for a lot of senior citizens and retired. And uh, of course, with rising life expectancy, the, you know, the period is becoming just longer and longer. So I'll uh, you know, just uh, uh, get into the discussion now because our panelists will be are best suited to answer all these questions. Uh, so, uh, Vibha, I'll start with you. And uh, before we start tackling the topic much in detail, uh, I think, uh, you know, the first thing that is important to understand for our audience is why is wealth preservation so important? And uh, uh, especially after retirement, The reason uh, is manifold, but largely at a macro level, inflow stops and outflow continues. Right. And outflow not only continues, but continues to increase in terms of uh, when it is inflation adjusted. Hmm. Uh, and therein lies needs also continue to increase, uh, especially health related needs. Hmm. So that becomes a potential recipe for not disaster, but something that one should pay enough attention to. Uh, you know, and also some of this is fixable because if one, uh, I'm sure in the, over the last uh, one and a half days, starting early, but even if one hasn't started early, uh, one can always course correct it very quickly uh, to see what is it that it's going to cost. For example, today a hip re replacement surgery, if it costs a senior citizen, say four and a half lakhs, that's going to cost maybe 5x or 6x over the next 20 years. So uh, uh, is one prepared to pay 25, 30 lakhs what one thinks about today for a heart surgery, for a hip re replacement, which is fairly uh, kind of a normal surgery to have? Uh, you know, those sorts of things on a what if scenario. Health inflation is, is two and a half to two X normal inflation. Uh, so these sorts of uh, aspects wherein uh, one has to be careful of, and that's the reason why it starts becoming increasingly necessary one thinks about uh, planning for some of these things. Right. Uh, uh, so coming to you, Kamlesh, uh, could you suggest some strategies for wealth preservation post-retirement, considering factors that we're talking about, inflation, health inflation. So what are the things that people can do? Like I am 60, uh, let's say, and I have a corpus, but uh, what do I do to balance things? You know, uh, I think there are a lot of instruments that uh, help plan for what you want to do in the future. One, I think the biggest issue is you don't know what you need post 60. I think if you have an idea of that to say, what am I planning for? Mm. Uh, because like Viva said, forget inflation, uh, mortality is getting better, health expenses are getting higher. So I think you need to have a mix. Uh, uh, basically equity does a hell of a lot on a long term basis, but maybe there could be a focus on looking at dividend yielding stocks because you get the part of the growth as well as you get uh, companies which have great track record of what they pay dividends over periods of time. So I think you should look at that if you're looking at equity. Uh, if you're looking at debt or if you're looking at bonds, then you need to make sure you stagger your investments that, uh, because you can't time the market. Nobody knows the interest rate cycle going up, interest rate cycle going down. So you need to make sure in bonds you have uh, uh, varying maturities. 
uh, so that you keep getting money frequently at different points of time, and then you can play the game of, at that point of time, you can reinvest at the rate at that point in time. So I think if you are doing bonds, you need to have uh, 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 that kind of stuff. If you're doing mutual funds, uh, then there are plans which talk about systematic withdrawal plans. It basically means you've invested in something for which you can withdraw over different points of time. And then last comes, of course, uh, as insurance CEO, I I'll give you, uh, you know, you need to plan for your annuity. I mean, we think the money that's gone in our PF for NPS is good enough for uh, what we think will happen when we retire at 60, but it's not good enough. Uh, I, at whatever point you start, you can build a huge corpus for uh, your retirement if you start planning for your annuity. I, I, I don't think at 30, 35, you can start, everybody says start young, uh, but at 35, you're more wor worried about paying your home loan EMI and car loan EMI rather than worrying about your annuity. But at least at 45, 50 in that range, if you can plan for your annuity, and there are products available which can be inflation linked or variable annuities which keep going up uh, post 60 over a period of time. So you'll need to have a mix. It's not that one asset class will answer that question. Some of the annuities give guaranteed interest rate benefit for the next 40 years. I and mean, there is no product in the industry that gives you a hedge of interest rate guarantee over 40 years. Today we are in a six, seven percent interest rate. If you become a developed nation, you'll go back to interest rates which could be two, three percent. But if today you plan for your annuity, you could have a six and a half, seven percent return for the next 40 years. So my sense is a mix of some of these. And don't bother about, you know, I met somebody said, you are going to tell me start early. I haven't started. I mean, I mean there's nothing like timing. Somebody asked about markets right now. If you haven't started, start now. I mean, there's no better time than starting from where you have not started to start for what you want to plan for your retirement. Sorry to uh, carpet, uh, sorry, photo bomb, but uh, since he mentioned, and I'm also from Life Insurance, since he mentioned annuity, one of the big criticisms of annuity is that it's taxed. I feel that we as Indians, including me, uh, overthink the tax aspect. People really need to understand that one can po potentially run out of one's money if one only has some of the other asset classes. As against looking at longevity risk, the whole concept, mortality risk is risk of dying prematurely, but longevity risk is risk of outliving one's savings. So again, balance, like Amlesh said, is very important, and not overthink the fact that it is going to be taxed. Also, when you look at tax at that time, perhaps one is at much lower marginal tax rates. Sorry, but I just thought that we should No, no, that. of course. <laughs> that is what the discussion is about. Tax is something that, you know, has been discussed earlier in the day also, that how, uh, you know, even NPS proceeds are taxed and uh, even mutual fund proceeds that way are taxed. So sort of coming to mutual funds, of course, long term is something that we keep talking about that, you know, start early and then, of course, you can build a good corpus. But sometimes people do say that, you know, uh, when you're younger, maybe you don't have enough money to uh, save. And, uh, but here we are also kind of tackling post-retirement. So suppose you have a corpus. So how do you, uh, you know, uh, how do you uh, bucket your corpus in a way that, uh, you know, it, it can give you some amount of growth for later years? See, thank you so much for having me on this panel. And I think first of all, I think the biggest ticking bomb in India is retirement planning or the right. lack of it. Just 6% of Indians have pension, right? The rest will create a pension. That's the situation we are in. And trust me, we've had this very uh, evolved discussions in a fund house like ours. People in Mumbai have clueless as to the amount of money they will need if they want to stay in Mumbai post-retirement. Clueless, right? At that age, two things are happening. One, we are not dying. Earlier, we used to die. So no problem, right? If you're going to live, the only friend you have when, you know, the so-called uh, uh, large families have disintegrated, the only thing that will stand by you is money. If I ask this entire audience, what is more important than you, for you, wealth or health, they will all smile and tell me health in their mind is wealth, right? That's the truth. So when you look at building your life now, I think retirement is one stop in your overall life. Earlier we used to have this whole thing, after you retire now, your corpus should become conservative. It was okay if it was going to last you another 10, 15 years. But he, this theme is 40 after 40, right? So you're talking about 40 years after that. I personally don't feel any change should happen to your portfolio. When you build your portfolio, it is catered to your risk profile, and, and that is how your portfolio is created. 
if you don't continue creating money post retirement you know like you'll run out of it so for me retirement is just one stop and your life continues so the core of the portfolio should continue if you want to continue leading your life and my basic view is if i've slogged for 40 years i should be leading a better life after i retire otherwise why did i slog for 40 years so nothing should change you should sit with your planner there are if you don't know what you want in your life you will not make a plan there are enough products between the three of us to cater to that that is secondary but people should realize that 40 saal hai what do you want for 40 years is more important coming to products is very very elementary actually yeah uh, it is but uh, uh, what is also coming out from the discussion is asset allocation is something that is very important to kind of balance stability and growth so uh, uh, viva what kind of uh, see i will talk about products because people ultimately you know they they do kind of choose or maybe you know buy both so what kind of products will you uh, Uh, suggest in terms of uh, providing both growth and stability and there's also this aspect of uh, especially when you have retired a lot of seniors are looking for those guaranteed income so they may uh, run after fds let's say so wh wh what are the things that you would suggest see it, it will have to be individually catered in terms of uh, personal situations but if i were to broadly bucket this first is health insurance um very very important uh, and uh, because that is something that will eat into one's corpus and how much it will eat into will be a function of how many times one falls ill as well as what is the medical inflation so how about getting that out of the way wherein for you your spouse or whoever the dependents are uh, one gets adequate levels of uh, health insurance mm. um becomes and it this is both indemnity as well as some of the fixed benefit uh, so that's out of the way um, second is does one have a home or not is your home paid for that becomes a very important criteria if it is not paid for i would strongly urge one to cover uh, in terms of what might be either the mortgage payments or what might be the maintenance the society maintenance costs uh, again there are products for, for long term uh, guaranteed outcomes to just pay for that then what happens is everything else is discretionary even if you have very little left over at least your bread and butter is taken care of in terms of uh, uh, you know not being worrying not worrying about things um, thereafter depending on the situation one can look at an equity upside uh, and there are various products for that if you are okay to lose everything that you've put in so that again depends on your risk appetite if you're not okay then that incremental amount can be again a um, more towards your balanced portfolio in terms of playing a little bit easy and and safer um, the bottom line is that by doing all of this can you live a worry free lifestyle uh, that becomes you know swarup mentioned that why are all of us working so hard for 40 years 30 40 years and then to continue worrying about things so the whole tagline of at hfc life sarutha ke jio we conceptualized this 23 years ago or 24 years ago uh, when people did not understand retirement but it was all about this that uh, you know how does one live with dignity how does one start enjoying your fruits of labor i think if that is uh, that is how one is thinking about the retirement years uh, and be spoke to one's own situation and and liabilities and dependents uh, then the answers start materialize there are enough products but the answers will have to be tailor made for your own situation right so viva has uh, i just piece. wanted you know mathematically if you if you look at it, it says that you need to have a corpus where you need to define roughly about 4 4 and a half percent withdrawal every year they call it the rule of 4% which means of what the corpus that you have you should be able to utilize 4% every year to be able to live for the next 40 years. Of course, four will make it 25. But because you are withdrawing only four, the balance part will hopefully appreciate that will take care of. Uh, so e mathematically, that's what you will need to be able to uh, do that. And that, like I said, if you put a mat to it, then you will get. And, and try and keep health out of it. Like Viva said, if you are able to keep health out of it, then that doesn't uh, uh, bring incremental cost. And some simple things. A lot of people buy term insurance. 
but you try and cover only to say I am buying term insurance for death. Term insurance technically is not just available for death. You can buy a term insurance which says after 60, if I don't die, then convert the premiums that I have paid into an annuity stream for the rest of my life. And there are products available like that in the marketplace today. You may end up paying a slightly higher premium, but think through when you're doing planning to say whatever I'm investing today, and I like what Swaroop said. I mean, if you earn so much money, work so hard, and we live in a very different world today, right? My 24-year-old son thinks that I'm supposed to take care of him when he's studying, and I'm supposed to take care of myself when I'm retiring. Uh, it's not the old philosophy where you think your uh, kids will take care of you when you are retiring. And if you want to have a better life than what you are having right now, I think it's important to start thinking from that perspective to say that your 60 to 80 should have a better life. If you've taken care of all your loan by that point of time and you have a house, I mean reverse mortgage is a great principle to get cash flow from your house so that you can enjoy the benefit of that while you are, while you are living rather than worrying about what will I leave behind if something goes wrong with me. I'm just saying the mindset for retirement is uh, extremely important before you get into the products for retirement. It's actually, you, you used a very interesting word because that comes post-retirement called guarantee. See, nothing in this world is free. Whenever you are asking for guarantee, guarantee comes with a cost. And when you're looking at 40 years, you have to look at the amount a 0.5 compounded at 5-6% over 40 years can yield or say 1% can yield. So when somebody is seeking for guarantee, in today's world there are enough tools for you to go online and check what is the cost of that guarantee. If you are aware and take the guarantee, no problems. 9 out of 10 people are not aware of, the, of what you are seeking for. And without guarantee also there are enough products which can cater and maybe cater a little better to you unless you, you know, you're not aware. So, please, this fallacy of guarantee needs to be dismantled somewhere in the world today. Yeah, but the other thing is that, you know, what we feel at Outlook, because this, uh, this issue of retirement planning is big. What we feel is immaterial. Of course. Because 60% <laughs> of world population under 30 is in India. We are now a small part of this population. The world which will now build is totally different to what we were. We are a minority now. Please understand. Yeah, definitely. But it's also perhaps time for the, you know, for various industries to kind of work together and, and stitch a narrative, uh, uh, keeping asset allocation in mind, where different kinds of things uh, which have different purposes uh, kind of come into the picture and make it a holistic solution for, uh, uh, you know, the f uh, ultimately the consumer. That's the interest that we are looking at uh, right now. So uh, coming back to cash flow and, uh, you know, uh, those kind of discussions. So insurance, of course, has annuity. There are uh, questions about uh, its returns, uh, inflation beating, et cetera. But we know that, you know, uh, there are costs and other things to guarantee that kind of return. Uh, so how do we... SWPs, the mutual fund industry says, can give growth as well. So how do you balance the two? So if you could uh, talk about a bit about SWPs on how it works as, uh, you know, as a uh, effective See, cash flow tool. A systematic withdrawal plan is like taking money out of your bank. More important, like Kamlesh said, you have to define how much money will yield to that 4%. Hmm. Suppose my life will not be okay with 4%. My life will need 7%. Again, I come back to my first question. Do I know how much I need? Are you sitting with a planner or are you sitting with yourself to decide at 60 I will need this kind of money? Then if there is a thumb rule of 4%, then you put that 4% and start withdrawing. I have met enough professionals, and fairly educated professionals who shrink post-retirement. Suddenly they feel they don't have money. But if you just put a good mathematical tool to it, even after withdrawing and say we, we do this very interesting calculation, there's some rule which says that in Mumbai you need three crores on today's date per family member to retire. There's some study, okay? Now on three crores, suppose you were to put an SWP systematic withdrawal of say 6% for a portfolio which is yielding 1%, 7%. That 1% which you leave behind in that portfolio compounded at your investment yield of the portfolio, will leave the legacy behind. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm making time and again is, are we aware of what we want? 
Once we are aware of what we want, there are enough products on insurance side. I am myself an insurance annuity invest, uh, buyer mm. because some of those yields made a lot of sense to me last March, mm. right? Yeah. Once you are aware of how much you need or how much cash flow you will need after that, whether it's insurance annuity or it's mutual fund SWP, you can work backwards. Right. Right. Simple point I'm again harping, more important to know how much you want then then the rest is easy. So yeah, assessment of your uh, kind of individual situation is very important, which Vibha was also highlighting earlier. And uh, would you uh, like to add on this whole uh, uh, cash flow business in, in terms of, uh, you know, that, that combination of, does that combination of annuities and SWPs really work to balance each other out in terms of returns and uh, slight growth and other things? Yeah, I think it does. And I myself ha have bought, um, some of those products that give those solutions, wherein uh, at HFC Life, we have tagged it my first salary after retirement, mm -hmm. right? Wherein the, it's as if a paycheck comes on the first of every month for some of the things that you have defined. In my case, I have defined my society charges mm -hmm. because then I don't need to think about it. I don't need to liquidate anything. You know, there is going to be a paycheck every month that, that comes from my company, you know, and that's what's going to get paid out some calculations that have been done on what it's going to be X years from now, right? So that takes care of that need. There would be other products. It could be SWP, it could be uh, government bonds, it could be whatever. It could even be equity, it could be dividend paying stocks, whatever that is, for maybe discretionary expenses. And more and more of us post-retirement want to see the world, want to pursue a hobby, want to do all the good things that we want to do. Uh, and in all probability, not stay with our kids. So you want independence till 80. Um, so, uh, so that's why, like Morgan Housel uh, said, in terms of psychology of money, that's how people think about needs, what they're afraid of, what delights them, in pockets of how you save money. So it's not one big bank account uh, for most people. Um, and so things you're worried about, if they're taken care of, things that delight you, could be discretionary. It could be that, okay, I, I got a good dividend from XYZ companies and let me go and splurge. And by all means, we should. So the liquidity part that you're talking about and cash flow is a subset of that. So if you do this kind of senior citizen asset liability matching at a personal level, uh, then some of this cash flow things will also be taken care of this. In my case, my cash flow is every month on this date, I have to pay this. It could be your EMI, it could be anything else that you need to pay. It could be that you're funding some family member and you need to pay that to that person. So when you do this planning, uh, both as what, where will you invest and when do you need cash, both go in tandem. Right, so uh, Swarup, I'll uh, give you another question. Wealth preservation is uh, also part of the topic and equities can kind of play a role because you know, a lot of people are not just worried about their own, uh, you know, how they'll spend after retirement, but also leaving a legacy behind. So uh, what do you have to say to that? See, I think uh, when you look at wealth preservation, it comes with wealth growth because then you have two, three things which you have to add to it is inflation. Inflation is known. But lifestyle inflation creeps in without you knowing. Are you aware of the lifestyle inflation that you are incurring every day in your life or increase of that? The other part, my colleague Srini is here. He said, are you aware of the GST growth that has happened? You know, so in some items now we are paying 28% GST. What if half your needs cater to 28% then? Right? So one part is capital preservation. The other part is adding these inflation to see what is the preservation amount that is leading to. Hence, a part of your asset always has to be in growth assets perpetually till you die. See, today let's face some reality. Even on your deathbed, the hospital comes in, puts some machines and charges something more to you in the last two, three days. You would want yourself to pay for that. And these, when you talk uh, finance, you have to be very unemotional, right? So. When you look at capital preservation, please understand you have to add the inflation amount to it, add your lifestyle inflation to it, add any other possible inflation to form that final kitty, and hence, a fair amount of it has to then be balanced in growth assets to keep that increasing rate intact. So, capital preservation should not be in any place which is not beating inflation, please. 
any place which is beating, not beating inflation is loss of money. So in, in pursuit of capital preservation, we then run this risk of parking our monies at place where we are losing money subconsciously and we are not aware. That is far more dangerous than, than anything else. You are losing money. Please. You know, I, I want to challenge your, the question that you asked. I mean, why is it the obsession that you have to leave something behind? I think during the period that you have lived, you have done enough for people of your responsibility that you've taken care of. That's okay? something a lot of people think about. That's but I'm saying that is what conflicts with your living your retired life well. And, and I think that is something which we have to get into our minds to say you've done enough. You've taken all the loans possible. You've made sure you paid all of them. You've done all the education requirements for your kids. I think your focus shifts unemotion, unemotionally in finance to say, I want to live my life well in retirement. I think that should be your focus. So that you optimize that well and say whatever residual after that totally is left behind is fine. Okay? And there is no single instrument that can take care of that. A lot of people here would be high on equity. Uh, depending on your risk profile, you say I'm an equity guy, somebody is a mutual fund guy, somebody says I'm a fixed deposit guy. And I have done all of it, okay? I, I, I have done all of, all, all of that before coming to insurance right now. And I'm only saying for retirement planning, I don't think any of them individually will f take care of your requirements. You will need a bit of equity. Equity, you'll always say in a 10-year will give you a great return. But if you go back 10 years, there were two years during COVID where you saw Nifty at 8,000. Which means your money will be at that level in a post-retirement phase uh, for two years, perhaps out of 10 years. So you have to wait. You can't draw from there. You need something else to draw from. That is why you'll need perhaps dividend yielding stocks at that point of time. MF is part of that. You know, life insurance annuity is a part of it. So irrespective of your risk profile when you are in retirement or pre-retirement is not going to be similar to your post-retirement. You will need a diversification along, across these asset classes to be able to take care of your post-retirement needs. See, it's great sure. to think that yeah. I'll leave behind something for myself. A small incident which happened in Trident last to last month, we're doing an event. So somebody told me that I have to take a house for my son. He said, I said, let's call your son. And I asked the son, do you want a house in Andheri? Sir, I have to live in Mumbai. Right, so when you are leaving behind something for whoever, it's better to maybe ask that person what he or she wants. What I want is good for my son. Trust me, my son will dismantle. It's the same thing between my father and me. My father feels that house in Bhubaneswar is fantastic for me. I'm never going to stay in Bhubaneswar, <laughs> is a reality. Yeah, so think these are all needs to be discussed with a planner, discussed with a distributor, probably documented and then taken forward. Money is not a small thing anymore. In India, you need a lot of money now. I keep on harping on that. So please, all these wishes need to be discussed with your distributor planner in a way that, you know, the solutions can be catered to your life. Absolutely. And now I won't ask too many questions because I would like to open, uh, you know, the floor for questions. There's a gentleman right at the end. Please give the mic to him. Please stand up, sir. And uh, you could give your name and the panelists you want to ask your question to. Hello, my name is Amit, Amit Merchant. I've been a banker myself. Uh, 22 years I've spent in bank. Uh, I wanted to share something, you know, yesterday I was in a taxi from uh, Worli to my house in Santa Cruz. And uh, the taxi driver told me that, you know, I have an insurance policy. He told me something about the policy and then he said, you know, somebody cheated me. He said, you know, there's an agent who came and he cheated me. So this was one thing, you know, I mean, the word cheated, it came in my mind. I've, I've been a banker, I've been into corporate investments in mutual fund. Uh, uh, Sarubji, I've worked with you also and almost all the mutual fund houses have been part of it. I also have my personal investment, you know, I have an AUM of around three crores, mostly in equity and then, you know, a small portion in the mutual fund. Now, my question is that, you know, when you talk about 40-40 event, uh, you have, you know, that kind of a mindset, you know, of a senior citizen, you know, what kind of a mindset he may have. And, uh, you know, you have a team which will cater to that kind of, you know, an individual who's in a retirement phase. Now, so far, what I've heard is, you know, you have spoken about, you know, your mutual fund, your large cap, mid cap, small cap you know, various investments, you spoke about annuity, uh, but my neighbor is a very common man, you know, he doesn't understand, you know, all those things. So what is your take on that? One. Two, uh, you spoke about, you know, research, you know, uh, a panel before probably you came, they spoke about Ellen uh, Greenspan and somebody spoke about Warren Buffett and they said diversified and nifty and so forth. 
now considering that uh, you know a lot of research is there you know uh, i myself have invested i'm a little greedy also you know so what according to you uh, would be the steps that you know one should not be greedy and look at long term investments somebody should go and exercise daily what is the mind game that one should have you know what kind of mind frame somebody should have to stay and you know make oneself uh, feel that you know i can stay for a long term investment in this kind of a portfolio and i can look at you know safe retirement that's a question probably i'll leave it with do you want uh, anyone in particular to answer that question anybody can answer my uh, just to cut it short maybe you know i wanted to see that you know you have a service mechanism in place so you have a lot of products do respect i worked with hdfc and icici also at senior level also at various times i'm enjoying my life now uh, i have i've been to social service i'm retired kind of a retirement so i've worked with these banks i've proven myself i've, I've given very good numbers you know I'm, my reference can be checked out no only thing i wanted to see that you know uh, none of the mutual i personally feel that you know none of the mutual fund has kind of a service kind of a team you know when you talk about 40 40 we have all standard products you'll have large cap small cap flexi cap all kind of caps you have but then what about the service issues any highlight you'll put on the service part because when you look at a senior citizen i look at myself also you know uh, passing on my senior citizen age and then i have my mother also now my mother also has you know equal sizable corpus but then she's put all the money in the fixed deposit she says i don't want to put anything in a diversified fund i do a lot of trading i do intraday i have i have research and you know a lot of things i have at my mechanism so i'm comfortable playing those things early in the morning you know uh, buying equities intraday or uh, you know uh, options and so forth but then you know senior citizens you know they still probably would prefer to go in a fixed deposit so anything probably you feel that you know on the service part you know uh, how we we'll look at you know 40 years kind of a man you have a service team you know catering to that kind of a mindset of an individual who is 40 years of age sir anybody can answer i'll i'll so i'll i'll take a part of your question and then swarup or so i think i think you know depending on the product category let's say for insurance companies we love people to buy some of our products earlier and genuinely it is important for people at 35 the issue is you buy your term insurance at 35 only for 30 lakh rupees to realize that at 50 you actually required a 5 crore cover and at 50 the insurance companies will give you it give it to you significantly costlier because at 30 you are more bothered about paying your home loan or your car loan but to your point for specific products around retirement the whole product of annuity starts typically at 45 because nobody is thinking about before that and therefore the entire organization in insurance is oriented towards talking to a 45 to 55 year old guy for annuity because before that talking to anybody over annuity actually doesn't work at all and that is the mindset that you have to say what is right for you and therefore the servicing element comes in because you are at least then making sure for a right customer you are selling the right kind of product to your question on what should you do at different points of time before you get into your retirement age and broadly i heard that as the second part of your question i think health is the most important thing that you have to work on typically i think we work on our health in the 35 and 40 but we don't work on our health in the 45 going to maturity uh, at retirement because that is what is going to be significantly costly for you over a period of time servicing is important for us because we are talking as as somebody who is supposed to take care of you for 40 years i mean only the insurance there are products which are available for 40 years and i am just giving you an example to say you know i don't know how many generations i've seen one in 100 year scenario they say that you see once in 100 years in a scenario we are lucky in that sense i'm sorry if i'm saying it that way that we saw covid which was one in 100 year scenario where life insurance and health insurance claims went up seven times and eight times and in your country which is in india for the 24 or 25 life insurance companies that we have we paid those seven times eight times more claims without any government interference or needing to bail us out at, at that point of time and still all of us are surviving and 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 doing well uh, uh, as an industry so that is one example of also being able to deliver your service other complaints like you mentioned of the taxi driver and i don't know how i can comment on that whether what 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 happened with him as an industry we think we want to get better for sure which is reflective over the last 5 years our complaint ratios are coming down but we need to work harder to make sure they come down significantly see just to answer you from our side see we are product manufacturers we build products catering to different risk profiles that's our job your answer is your question is a little different you are looking at a servicing of your life which is not essentially available from our end your job and life is not a straight line you can't predict that you know 40 years post retirement my want and need will be the same again i bring back the simple question 
your answer will be given to you by a planner or a distributor. Even in your bank, if you have an RM who caters to you on your products and your portfolio, this answer will come from that person. If you ask me, I'm a buyer-seller, I can only give you a Mire product, right? For all you know, in your portfolio, you may not need a Mire product, right? It depends on what you need and what your life goals are. And according to that, if you look at your answers more from a distributor or planner who will be with you to cater to all these service requirements all through your life, that will be a better solution than looking at it from my perspective or our side. We are product manufacturers. We don't give you this solution. One more question. Uh, the gentleman in front. Hello, this is Sanjay uh, from an IT company. Uh, my question is that uh, government smartly do two kinds of tax up. One each from young generation who do expenses without saving and all these things category. So they are not doing saving. They never bother about home, just like we are the one when we uh, earn, first think about a first home. Nowadays, the young generation moved to, they forgot about tax saving and all these things. They have moved to the second slab. They are only doing the expenses. Their first priority is that when they are getting the salary, they will do the good mobile, they will uh, purchase a lovely car, all these things. The second category is that currently ATC, ATE, government what thinking just like there is a kind of uh, uh, environment things is uh, required. So ATE something they have put it and they created uh, the existing slab. Do you think in this current scenario there is another slab to be created who think just like young generation we have created a slab, okay, don't do any saving. Okay, do expenses. There is another slab to be created, which will be, who will think not the young generation, old type. Okay, I'll live longer, so my old age will be happier than younger side. So, or do you think that there is any kind of changes is required in the ATC category, put something just like only some new recommendations to be come up, so that the more investment come on the IT, uh, just like existing slab, in the upcoming investment. See, uh, we can want many things. Whether we will get it or not is a different. I think government is moving towards no benefits. People need to realize what they need to do and do it because it is good for them. I am of the camp that some a sweetener, if it is given, then people focus on it. And worldwide, especially for long-term retirement planning, when you get a little bit of sweetener, then people start early. That's Correct. a fact, right? We continue to engage with the government with this view that give something a little bit. At least on in the pension avatar, there is a little bit. ATCCD was there. So some things like that are there. We'll have to see whether more of that is there. For example, every year we do mention that annuities should not be taxed or at least treated like a capital gains tax wherein the corpus should be a deduction. Otherwise, there is a risk of double taxation that is happening. Um, but we'll have to see in terms of, I agree with you that some level, something if it is yeah. given, it makes people focus. And we, yes. all, uh, you know, we do believe at least in the month of March that let us not leave money on the table if it is available to us, right? ATD is there from a health perspective and people still utilize that. But many things we want, like I said, hopefully over a period of time, at least amongst the more educated uh, people, certainly in this room, regardless of tax, and that was my opening point, let us move away from only because there's a tax sweetener to all the discussion that happened today, that what is right for us and our family. Let us focus on the bigger picture than only tax. But at the same time, we will continue to engage with the government on the good that can come, much bigger level of savings that can come in by giving a little bit uh, of enhancement, you can call it whatever it is, ATC, re revamped ATC, something else, uh, or, or retirement specific uh, little bit, uh, we'll continue to ask for that. See, I think first of all, I disagree that the young are not investing. If you see our industry data, 
It's the young who have started really piling on the SIPs. That's there for us. Yes, their life is very different from our life. Yes. We used to create assets, they will create experiences. That's their life. Yes. Because they are socially far more secure, economically far secure. They are investing. I don't think it's the, it's the government's need to create your retirement kitty. The need for investing and the need to create a retirement kitty belongs to you. Till that need does not arise, no taxation can do anything for anybody, is my opinion. The only, only other problem, quick answer to your question, because she's standing to ask us to get up now, uh, is when that limit gets fixed, it is one limit that cuts across 140 crore population of the country. It's not good enough. Because your investment philosophy then says, I'll put as much only for that, whereas your requirement for different people may be three, four times of that. I think it's a bad incentive uh, driving for getting different outputs that you want. It may not be the right thing to do. I mean, uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, for your patience. And uh, I hope if there are more questions, you can catch up with the experts. Yes. Uh, and thanks a lot. And on the tax thing, I think the new tax regime will solve a lot of issues there. So.